I don't know. Sometimes it's all too much. What is? Life. Number 10. Peter Griffin versus Homer Simpson. It was me. Of course, we were expecting a lot of clever material throughout the Family Guy Simpsons crossover, but nothing like this. The Griffins visit Springfield and run into the Simpsons, but the meeting ends in disaster when the patriarchs do battle. Well, what are you saying? I'm saying the Simpsons suck. Why, you? In a showdown modeled after the famous chicken fights, Peter and Homer brawl on the street, on a school bus, and inside the nuclear power plant before turning into superheroes. And that's not even the end of the fight. The very idea of Peter and Homer finally sharing the screen left us amazed, but this sequence left us speechless. Not only is it beautifully animated, but it honors the history and lore of both shows. Worst chicken fight ever. Number 9. Christmas Season I am so excited to see Santa Claus. You know what I think is really wonderful? Of all the malls in this great country of ours, he chooses to come here year after year. Only Family Guy could warp bright Christmas cheer into gloomy misery. Despite its rather jolly holiday theme, Road to the North Pole is undeniably one of the show's darkest episodes. Brian and Stewie discover that the North Pole is an industrial wasteland filled with mutated elves, carnivorous reindeer, and a sick Santa Claus. I'm Stewie Griffin, and I'm going to kill you! Ah, oh, thank God. Vowing that he is not fit to deliver the presents, the duo do it themselves, but end up committing a violent home invasion. Yes, the episode has a happy ending, but both we and the characters have to endure a lot before we get there. This was one house. We've been here for an hour and a half. An hour and a... First of all, we're not even Santa anymore. This has been a home invasion. But an hour and a half, Brian. Number eight. Brian sacrifices himself for Peter. Hey, 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 hey. Watch out, party people. Ah, oh, what the hell are these things? Curtains or something? Boring. Holy smoke, it's crowded in here. There, oh, that's terrific. That opens up the whole room. Season 9 offers a devastating one-two punch in Road to the North Pole and its immediate follow-up, New Kidney in Town. Peter becomes addicted to energy drinks and attempts to make his own using kerosene, believing that literal fuel is what gives its drinkers energy. Well, it doesn't, and Peter immediately collapses from kidney failure. Peter, that drink will kill you. Brian, whatever kills me makes me stronger. <sighs> See, Brian? I feel great. Wanting to save his best buddy, Brian decides to sacrifice himself and donate both of his kidneys. It's an incredibly touching sentiment, and one we never thought we'd see on Family Guy. Things get even more emotional when Stewie kidnaps Brian, not wanting to lose his trusty canine companion. For such a goofy show, this episode packs a lot of heavy material. Look, I've made up my mind, all right? Now untie me. No, I will not! How dare you make plans to abandon me? Number 7. Creative Time Travel Oh my god, what's with Meg's voice? She sounds like someone who's about to give up a huge opportunity. Family Guy has always been very creative when it comes to time travel, and it has never shied away from poking fun at itself. Both combine in amazing fashion with Season 10's Back to the Pilot. Brian and Stewie travel back to January 31st, 1999, the day that Family Guy premiered. While there... They remark on the shoddy animation, the awkward use of cutaway jokes, and Meg having a different voice actress. Ew, I remember this. Peter's eye did that weird creepy thing where it went over his nose. Come on, you're worrying about nothing. Oh, remember when you got drunk off the communion wine at church? But the fun doesn't stop there. As Brian and Stewie continuously interfere with the episode's events, like stopping the Kool-Aid man from bursting through the courtroom wall, back to the pilot is smart, inventive, and hilarious. You're the Kool-Aid guy. Yeah. What are you doing? Just waiting. For what? I'm just waiting, dude. Relax. Number six, the multiverse. And that's where you got the pig in a parallel universe. Prepare yourself, Brian, and I'll show you. Forget time travel. Let's talk the multiverse. Road to the Multiverse opened the eighth season in breathtaking fashion, with Brian and Stewie traveling through a number of parallel universes. The result is not just comedy gold, but a smorgasbord of visual delights. They travel to a number of unique locales, each one more imaginative and impressive than the last. This can't be it. This doesn't look familiar. You're right, Brian. Apparently, this is a universe where everyone has to take a poop right just now. 
Some are done for laughs, others purely for style. Like the Disney universe that could easily pass for a long-forgotten film Pride from the Vault. And it's not just devoted to Family Guy viewers who loved it. The episode won the Emmy for Individual Achievement in Animation, the ultimate seal of approval. Where are we? I don't know. The device can't make heads or tails of it. It's just some sort of weird, low-resolution, blocky universe. Number 5. The Adam West Tribute We still can't believe he's gone. He was such a great mayor and a great uncle to the kids. Wait, Uncle Adam is dead? How many people has this show killed? Family Guy doesn't often get sentimental, but when it does, it does so surprisingly well. Season 17 closes out with Adam West High, in which the beloved Mayor West passes away. The episode aired nearly two years after the real Adam West died and served as a tribute to the late actor. As the title implies, James Wood High School is renamed Adam West High. And the episode ends with a montage of live-action footage honoring the beloved performer. It's a fitting tribute to a man who gave so much to the show, and a great way to say goodbye to a legendary character. And while you do that, I'll make a special video dedication reminding people of how great Mayor West was. Number 4. Stewie and Lois Do Battle What are you doing? I'll teach that hussy to go on a boat ride without me! There was a time when Stewie repeatedly tried to end Lois. While this subplot has long been abandoned, it was a major driving force of the early seasons and culminated with this two-part television event. The first half, Stewie Kills Lois, seemingly ends the subplot when Stewie takes down Lois with gunfire. What are you... What, what are you doing with a gun? Something I should have done a very long time ago. But Lois survives the attempt and reciprocates, resulting in a battle for the ages. Of course, we didn't actually think that Lois was dead, and besides, the ending reveals that this was all a computer simulation concocted by Stewie. But we still couldn't believe that the show went there. So what you're saying is that what you experienced in the simulation didn't really happen or even matter? Yes, that's correct. So it was sort of like a dream? No, it was a simulation. Number 3. Diane the Killer What are you saying? I'm saying James Woods isn't the murderer. The murderer is one of us. <gasps> it's not rare for Family Guy to do themed episodes, and Season 9 opened with a parody of classic murder mysteries, specifically Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. And like all great murder mysteries, it ends with a startling twist that leaves her jaws on the floor. Oh, no, I so was I, but, you know, I really, I should, I should go. No, I don't think so. Lois discovers that news anchor Diane Simmons was behind the killings, and she in turn is killed by Stewie when she attacks Lois. The twist was great, but what left us truly speechless were the deaths. Unlike other themed episodes, this one took place within the show's actual continuity. You shouldn't have stopped to say hi to me. You would have lived longer. God, why do I ever try to be friends with other women? Number 2. Stewie Loves Brian I was kind of saving it, but uh, what the hell, right? Saving it for what? That's not important. The dog and the baby have always been a popular duo, and they are often the subjects of their own storylines. Brian and Stewie is an experimental chapter of Family Guy, without cutaways but with a heavy dose of drama. The titular characters undergo significant developments, with Brian revealing some dark secrets and Stewie coming into his own as a friend and companion. In a surprisingly tender moment, the baby admits that he loves Brian and would be lost without him. Maybe even deeper than that. I, I, I love you. It's always a shock when Family Guy plays sentimental, and it's even more of a shock hearing it come from Stewie of all people. The episode's dramatic tone was widely praised, and it's due to unforgettable moments like this. To begin my life with the beginning of my life, I record that I was born on a Friday at 12 o'clock at night. Number 1. Brian's Death God, look at this day, huh? You know, usually I'd be sitting inside writing, you'd be working on one of your machines, but here we are enjoying it. This show had us going for a while. Season 12's Life of Brian is perhaps its most infamous half hour, featuring the startling death of Brian Griffin. The dog is hit by a car while playing street hockey with Stewie, and he later dies in the hospital after saying goodbye to the family. Stupid street hockey. I wish we never went to that dump. Oh, this is all my fault. Not only is the moment played completely straight, but it's a realistic scenario that many people have been forced to endure. 
The episode ends with the Griffins adopting a new dog, leading some viewers to believe that he was permanently gone. Of course, that wasn't actually the case, as Stewie brings him back to life just two episodes later. You're alive, my friend! What? Of course I'm alive. What the hell's going on here? Brian, that car killed you. And when it did, a little part of me died as well. Did any of these moments leave you speechless? Let us know in the comments below. You know what I want for Christmas? I want my friend back. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.